Obviously, when you think about a show like The Expanse, you think about the sets and the props and the costumes, but one aspect that you might not consider in your head that's super, super important is the graphic design, the labels on the walls, on the floors, and on the clothes, and that is the job of Kim Sison here. Kim, you're first assistant graphic designer? Yes, I am. Um, I've been working on The Expanse since season two. Tell me about what your job is like. You're sitting, you're, you're coming up with graphical information, labels, stickers, posters. Yeah, so I'm the graphic designer for The Expanse. I basically do all the graphics that you see on sets, on uh, any props. Um, so these would be more obvious things yeah. where you would see like branding and stuff. But we also do the chevrons on the floors right. and all the, like the splashes of color that's vinyl is ours, numbers, space numbers, lots of space numbers. <laughs> space numbers, <laughs> warning labels. Um, a lot of warning labels. I've become like pretty much the go-to person for mechanical labels because yeah. I've just done thousands at this point and I just, I love looking at them now. Like it's, it's something you don't usually notice. Um, There's but a visual iconography adds. to it that's yeah. very specific. And it, but it just adds to it, adds to the texture. Um, and yeah, that's what I do. Well, so I want to talk about this. because So here is a backpack from season three, am I right? Uh, season two. Season two. Yeah. And uh, like when we when we think about something like this, people may see this as a prop and go, oh yeah, that looks like a kid's prop from some yeah. show, right? But you've got to no, design it I and imbue it with it. history. Yeah. So it's funny because like I, I read the book, um, the first book before I started. Um, and this there's this whole beautiful like segment in the book where they talk about Misko and Marisco but it was never in the first season right and I was really glad that they like added it in a prop as a nod to the book series right um yeah so I basically took what was described in the books as two comic um, characters yeah as these two it's a, a children's tv show right. that exists in the universe um that Holden and Miller were both reminiscing about um while they were in Eros um, and they were like singing the the theme song, and they were like, "Oh, and and like, do you remember when they're always like being chased by this guy with a pink hat and all that?" So yeah, we I just had to <laughs> create it. I mean, that's the thing is that it feels like it carries with it a history of a thing yeah. that really existed, and that's yeah, non trivial yeah. to 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 give it that. Um, so, was there was there source material you took inspiration from, like um, the Teletubbies or? I, just really like looking at lowbrow art as yeah. far as um I, I was really really big into vinyl toys mm -hmm. uh like in the early 2000s so this was all i drew which was really funny because when it came up as a project i was just like i want to do Send it me in, coach. <laughs> like this is i have been training all my life for this am i right <laughs> that within your department if you're super enthusiastic about a specific design they're just going to give it to you because oh, yeah, they know you're going to do it right pretty much that, that's, yeah i that's usually fabulous. get like the little drawing ones um there's usually about four or five people in the department and mm -hmm. each person has something that they specialize in um but yeah like i do the little <laughs> The little illustrations like this. this is, I mean, yeah. eventually you'll use everything you ever learned, yeah, right? Exactly. Also, I want to talk about <laughs> this, this incredible uh, uh, intergalactic waffles takeout <laughs> container. Now, just in when you encounter a real takeout container yeah. from some branded company in the real world, it's the result of hundreds of hours of meetings and decisions oh. and efficiencies and industrial design. And then you have to do all that yourself in, in like, like a few two, hours. Like, I think I only had maybe two days to do this or something crazy this like that. This is amazing. For, this is incredible. It feels yeah. like I'm looking at a real thing. Um, we, we had some um, like source material that was just these like, really beautiful packaging like asian packaging mm -hmm. um that was just like from google like we were just googling like yeah. all these really interesting packaging and i just kind of created this thing out of it but it's not even real cardboard um because oh, really? we couldn't they couldn't print on cardboard so i had to like get a cardboard texture and print it on vinyl yeah, so this is whole like this is all vinyl on cardstock. <laughs> 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 I got printed, and then 
like it was really funny. It's just like getting a prototype done out of paper and like making sure everything worked and the color matching was great, like okay. Because all I really was given were these takeout boxes. Okay. The two takeout boxes and these like ice cream containers. And you came up with and, the whole um, form, yeah, formal. And, <laughs> oh, and the cutlery and Jim's like, Put them all together. <laughs> I love the cutlery sitting in this. This yeah. is brilliant. And this is what food companies should actually do. This is yeah. smart design. Thank you. That is fantastic. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, 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 Ty Frank just gave me something that I think is partially your work. And, oh, and yes. it is the Savage yeah. Industries jumpsuit with yes. this grill. This is you. This is me. So yes. now you know how much I love Futura Extra Bold, oh, the world's yay. greatest well, font. It is a great font. It's very universal, and I think it will carry on hundreds of years from now. <laughs> Talk there to me about go. this gorilla. Talk to me. The okay, so the gorilla is actually um, originally was a stock image okay. um, because we only we only have like a day usually to do these right, things, right. and it's, it's tricks of the trade. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got this like full size gorilla image yeah. um, and then just like manipulated it to get just this head and like it had to be the perfect shape to go with the, with the logo and then it turned into that and like when I first got it I was really really excited <laughs> because I was a huge fan of Mythbusters oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so it's really bizarre it's like going in full circle isn't it yeah that's, you're gonna find that regularly with life now yeah. um well tell me about these other logos these are also all yeah yours. these are all other um logos that were created um i think these were created by me yeah i'm pretty i've done <laughs> we've done so, so many <laughs> mission patches on this show right so um, yeah, it's so just for like, every single mission patch, you have to again tell a story about that mission. Basically, so it can't feel like every other mission patch. Yeah, exactly. And um, we just looked at a lot of mission patch um, references online, mm -hmm. um, and like even just looking at sci-fi, like other mission patches from sci-fi shows as well, just to kind of get that blend of both. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about your process. Do yeah. you start out with a paper and pencil doing rough d um, rough sketches or do you use a... Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do. Um, usually it's just mucking around with <laughs> with Illustrator. Just moving things yeah. around until something it's, feels right. Our working files are just, it's an absolute disaster. It's all these like shapes <laughs> and like trying to like cut chamfers out of things because everything's on an angle. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, and then you just kind of keep going until you see a shape that works um, and a color scheme that works. <laughs> when I was I was working in the model shop at the Industrial Light and Magic, um, I did a lot of laser cutting, and as yeah. such, I drew a lot of weird shapes. And whenever I drew a particularly complex one, I would actually store it in a separate file. Uh. That just was like the repository of all weird <laughs> shapes. You must have files yeah. like this. Yeah, I do. I also have a big <laughs> file of just like reference images, like going back to mechanical stickers. Yeah. I have a, like a library of mechanical stickers that I just go back to every time for reference. Just for inspiration. Yeah, just for inspiration. Um, yeah, yeah. And as far as like for things like where I'm actually illustrating something, like mm -hmm. the intergalactic waffles and um, even this and Marisco, it would be like an iPod, uh, iPad sketch. With a at pen. At first, yeah, with a pen. Okay. Um, because that's where it's going now. Yeah. Like paper and pencil are not a thing. Yeah, I as still much. love them. I still try. I and do draw, draw on, on post-it notes, though. I do draw on a lot of post-it notes. <laughs> yeah. Do you save them? I do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I still have. I think I. I still must have something from the original Misco and Marisco somewhere. Is there a design in season four that you are particularly ecstatic about? Um, well, aside from the intergalactic waffles, which I, I'm really is, excited about. Well, this is about. pretty amazing. I'm blown um, away by this. My favorite, I think, that I've done for season four is the Tynan. The Tynan. Um, so I did all the graphics for, for the Tynan and the Tynan airlock, and yeah. it was just so cool. Like, it just felt like you are in space and you're in the future and like everything's so gritty and it all fell so into place fun. for you oh yeah oh, that's yeah great. i was a huge sci-fi nerd growing up and it's really funny like this is like the perfect job for oh you. yeah totally it's, it's <laughs> totally the perfect job for me because it's like again it's coming full circle from like now i'm making canon Yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. You're the person that yeah. someone would go to to yeah. ask about it. And I used to go to like, I, I mean, I still go to Comic Cons and I still get excited about cosplay and everything. And now there's like people that are cosplaying stuff that I've done and like 
replicating graphics that we've done and it's just really cool. That's the best. Yeah. Kim, thank you so much thank for you. giving me a glimpse into your world. Thank you for having me. Awesome.